Hello guys, Bladefinger here. I uh, just finished uploading the Star Wars Battlefront Limited Edition PS4 unboxing. Um, that video is a little choppy, but I was super excited and I was super tired as it was a midnight release. And I've been playing the heck out of the thing and really enjoying the game. So if you're on uh, PSN and you have the PS4 and the new Star Wars Battlefront game, uh, let me know in the comments. I will send you a personal message and we will hook up on PSN. That'd be pretty cool. Um, but let's get to the bread and butter of this video and this is going to be on the CRKT Journeyer. In my last video, the PlayStation 4 unboxing, I mentioned that I had a Blade HQ unboxing that did not get uploaded. That was because the unboxing was way too long. I rambled too long and I put way too much information out on this knife. I just wasn't happy with the video so I wasn't going to put it out. Um, that's just kind of plain and simple. If you're asking what the other items are, the one other item was this beautiful TI2 design or TI2 designs uh, tech liner pen. This is the tech liner acid wash copper with uh, it's a bronze clip. I believe that's also acid washed and just a little hint about this uh, pen I will be doing a video on it super heavy but just amazing pen it's absolutely flawless in my eyes the uh, cap is held on by magnets super cool and that acid wash copper is beautiful but that's another video the main reason for this video is about this knife right here, the CRKT Journeyer. I'm sure a lot of you have been seeing videos about this knife, and I was as well, and I kind of bought into the hype, and I really wanted to try one out, so I did buy one. I spent around $32, I think, on the uh, on this knife from Blade HQ, um, and I was extremely disappointed. Yes, disappointed. Um, Let's just show you what comes in the box. Literally, your knife comes in a little uh, plastic sleeve like most other knives do. And you got this little thing, which I did like this. I found this was kind of humorous. Um, you just got a CRKT thing in here, and when you flip it over, uh, it's been here forever, but I love it. Uh, how to avoid being asked to work the weekend by your boss. Tell your boss you have a family emergency. Fake an illness. Cut a hole in the ceiling with a kiss knife. And climb out. A humorous little comic. And then you have the... Uh, warranty information and stuff but that is not the matter of this video nor is the box their packaging is perfectly fine but I was going to do a review on this and this is the closest I'm gonna get I tried to carry it for two days and I simply could not never have I disliked a knife so much I, I just don't like it and it's not the design I love this design and I love the idea behind this design. It's the execution. Yes, I'm talking about UCRKT. The execution on this knife is awful, if you ask me. Uh, I've seen positive reviews. I don't agree with any of them. Um, let's get the positive things out of the way. Centering, decent, especially for a $30 knife. Pretty good. Uh, is it sharp? Yes, it's damn sharp. Let me get my notepad here razor sharp even cuts down great right no um, it's sharp no side to side play and it's got a really cool design uh, you got the little allen key that's or hex wrench that's not hex wrench torx wrench that's included in the knife I'll show you that in a bit you can adjust all your screws on a fly. There's no problems with it. Well, there's a bunch of problems, but... And the texturing's all right. And for such a boxy knife, it is pretty comfortable. Granted, one thing. Talk about that later, too. A lot of laters with this knife, which is not a good thing. Um, but yeah, that's about it. I haven't even had it long enough to test edge retention because it's just not pleasant to use. Um, let's get into the first issue... I had with a knife and by far the most obvious this is meant to be kind of like a legal everywhere locking knife kind of deal um, the knife works like a slip joint with a half stop but it's not a slip joint with a half stop the knife is actually rolling on a detent system so what that means is what retains the blade is a ball detent 
and there's little holes drilled into the frame and that detent slips into that hole and it puts pressure on it to stop it which is why you hear that little click and it sucks in so you have a half stop little half stop detent right there and then you have another hole in full open that puts pressure on the blade that keeps it in that spot supposedly and then the trick is with this knife you have this little thing which that's the first time it's come out without hassle it's your little um, torque wrench that can adjust your pivot can take off your body screws you can take apart the whole knife with this well, my first problem with it it's extremely hard to use because it's so small I, I've I had an extremely hard time just adjusting the pivot but anyways the idea behind it is you can put it in there sink it in there it goes all the way through the knife and now you have a little kind of like a fixed blade it's basically a locking mechanism which really when you think about it it'd be pretty hard for this mechanism to fail considering that this is a hole through the blade and it's holding onto that strong uh, or I guess that's not G10 but it is still lined so that's a plus um, but it seems very sturdy and I'm sure it is very sturdy in this uh, position there's another problem extremely hard to get that thing out because they put the divot right here well when you're pulling right here that's putting leverage on the uh, on the uh, little wrench pushing it that way which makes it not want to come out so most of the times I'll just grab something small and poke the hole that lets it go out lets it fall out basically but that's not even the biggest issue I have with this knife it's, it's annoying I could totally get past that this is the biggest issue I have with the knife it takes like no tension whatsoever to disengage that detent. It's lighter than some of the actual knives that I own that use detents and locks. I mean, I guess here's what I'm comparing it to. Something of a similar price range. Let me reach down here. I have a case slip joint. A Sodbuster Jr. This is a very, very budget friendly knife. This is around $30, $40 max. No half stop. But that spring is extremely strong. Yes, it's going down, but I can put thumb pressure on it and not really worry that much about it. This knife, if I put any kind of thumb pressure on it, it slips off the detent. It's ridiculous. I, I can barely even do it up here. Once I get to that part, it pushes the detent. And I'm not even pushing down that hard. Like the jimping, unless you have this little bar in, it's useless. Like, you cannot grab a purchase on it because it's just gonna... I mean, this is just me barely rubbing my finger across. And you might be thinking, well, that choil, you know, is there. Maybe it supports the blade. No, it doesn't. It just keeps it from closing on your finger. You still have the blade like that. You might as well just have this blade a friction folder. You really might as well have that. Because if you have more friction, I feel like that blade would stay up more. And then you're not advertising it as something it's not. I would rather this be advertised as a friction folder with no detents because then I would know what I'm getting into. On all the reviews they make it seem like this kind of lock is pretty solid and it's not. This this detent is just horrible. I mean it's to the point where I can literally and I will keep my hands right here. I can't do it in camera. You can't do that with the case. You can't do that with cheapo slip joints. And you guys saw it. So uh, that's by far my biggest beef with it. It's to the point where I don't feel comfortable carrying it. I have carried this thing for months. And I've never felt un uncomfortable with it. Because it's got a decent spring. And it's just an overall decent little knife. I've carried friction folders and felt more comfortable than this knife. I do not like this knife. It, it's ridiculous. The opening, it's okay. Uh, one-handed. Obviously, it's easy to close one-handed. But this little... I guess Nick right here allows you to open it one-handed, and that is because the detent is so light, which is ridiculous. They did get the jimping good, and it saddens me that they did get it so good, because I can't use it. I simply can't. And every time I pull this knife out and I want it to stay solid in, I don't want to have to fiddle around with this thing. I really don't. Another beef I have with this knife, the pocket clip. Before I show you this one, let's take example, or let's see a few examples of good pocket clips. Cold Steel Fin Wolf. 
Cold Steel is known for having outrageously tight clips, but they work, especially with their smoother um, scales and frames. This is a tight clip. It works well. See the screws are back here. It's not a deep carry clip, but that's fine. I have stuff to grab onto when I'm pulling the knife out. Um, let's look at a couple other. Kershaw 6024 BLK, the little Emerson line. Decent little clip. I like it. It works really well. It's very similar, similarly shaped to the cold steel. You can see that. Easy. Great clip. One of my clips, the uh, Ontario Rat 2. Sorry for bumping the camera around so much. Still love this blade, by the way. It's, as you can see, the same shape. Let me see if I have one a different shape. Um, Quartermaster Mr. Roper. Very long clip. Screws back here. That's a nice clip. Believe it or not, that little space, it still does get good retention in the pocket. So, that's a nice clip. Disappointed with this knife, too. Get back to you in a minute on that with another video. Um, that's, I mean, that's really all I need to show you. Uh, one more Kershaw Skyline. Kind of the same as the uh, Quartermaster. But you get the point. Those are good clips. This clip is atrocious. First of all, look how deep that carries. It, it carries past the knife, which is horrible. It, it sucks. There's nothing to grab onto, especially since this material doesn't grab a lot. I could get past all of that, besides the blade. I could get past every flaw in this knife, except for the blade and one other. Why are you going to have a pocket clip and put a screw right before the end of the pocket clip? Because what happens there, maybe I can use the folded up piece of paper to show you. What happens here is when you go to put this in your pocket, you'll ride past that, we're all happy, we're all happy, and bam, you stop. You start snagging. It snags horribly. Every time. I wanted to take this knife out of my pocket. I had to literally stop, use two hands, and fiddle with it for about 30, 45 seconds just to get it out and in my pocket. It, no, it's extremely disappointing. If I have a knife in my pocket, I don't want to have to sit there and fiddle with it with two hands just to get it out. Even with this thing, I don't have to fiddle with both of my hands and for 30 seconds to get this out of my pocket. If it's down deep in my pocket with my keys, my phone, and other stuff, I can still pick it out and pull it out in about 15 seconds max. And really, the time to pull out my knife, especially something like this, it's not going to be in a defensive situation, but it's annoying. It really is. It's just annoying. I don't really care about how fast it is, but if I have to keep fiddling with it, there's no use. I'm not going to carry it. And that's one of the reasons I don't want to carry this knife. And I, it really, I, I'm really sad about it too because I love this design. I love the thought behind it. I even like how the knife looks. I like everything about it design-wise. Execution-wise, CRKT dropped the ball on this one. They really did. It's really disappointing. The knife feels good in hand except for that clip. Back here, it creates one of the worst hotspots I've ever felt on a knife for my hands. It just digs into my palm right there. I mean, it's atrocious. This whole knife is just extremely disappointing, CRKT. And I really do hope you see this video because I really want you to see a negative review on one of your products. It just irks me. It really does. I'm not a person who gets a ton of money. It may seem like it, but I just end up selling a lot of my stuff and that's how I get money. Um, I mean, I sold stuff to get the pen and this, which it was a pretty expensive order, mainly from the pen, but... There are a lot of other good quality $30 knives that I would have much rather reviewed and given you my thoughts and opinions on. But instead, I ended up with a knife that was sent to a bunch of, you know, big name YouTubers. I'm not mentioning any names. And they gave it a positive review because CRKT wanted them to. And CRKT sent them that knife for free. I'm a consumer who spent $30 on this knife and I'm greatly disappointed. Because of these problems, I don't even want to carry this knife. I mean, look at this. Do you want a knife that takes that much? I mean, here's a toothpick 
from a Swiss Army knife. Let's see, the tip didn't do it. Let's go towards the center of it. The center of it did it, no problem. You shouldn't be able to do that. You, you really shouldn't. I mean, this is just all my pinky at the very back, actually. My pinky's not strong, guys. It's just ridiculous. It really is. It takes nothing. It takes no force at all. I can literally open this by flinging it and close it by flinging it. it if you're going to make a knife that stays open on a detent system, make sure that detent system works. That is plain and simple. Make sure it works. That's all I really have to say about this knife. Uh, it's really bothering me. I don't know what I'm going to do with this knife. I don't. I mean, I could do a giveaway, but really I wouldn't feel good about it because I'm just giving away a crappy knife. I could sell it, but I wouldn't feel good about reselling it. I don't know. Maybe I'll just kind of put it up, you know, as a reminder, don't buy crappy knives and don't fall into hype. Because a lot of the times if you find one of these hyped up designs like this and it's not made by one of the bigger companies or it's not ex a little bit more priced uh, expensively, kind of closer to the $50, $60 range, especially for something that's running off of a decent system to maintain the knife in open position, I should have figured $30 was too little money to do that. Um... It's just, this knife didn't impress me in any way, shape, or form, and I only carried it two days before. I just got completely frustrated and sick of it and could not handle it. So, um, yeah, that's my, I guess it's a review. I'll post it as a review. Um, it's not really a review. I'm kind of sad I didn't get to test its uh, edge retention. Um, I just don't like using it. It's a uh, Leong Ma design. He's a... He makes uh, some beautiful customs. Uh, follow him on Instagram, and he makes uh, absolutely gorgeous knives. And I'm sure if he were to make a custom of this knife, and it were, you know, I mean, it's obviously it'd obviously be an expensive knife. But if he made a custom, or even a higher end production company like Spider Co. or someone like that were to make this knife, I think there'd be no issues. Uh, it's a wonderful design. I really do like it. So all props to Leon Ma. No props to CRKT. Um, you've really disappointed me in this one. I own very few of your knives. Uh, most of them are neck knives, which is about two or three. And I like the Minimalist. That's a good little knife. The spew is a little too big for me for a neck knife. And I own, I think it's like the Dogfish or something like that. And it's all right, but you really dropped the ball on this one, guys. I just want to let you know, the Journeyer, not a good knife. All my viewers, please stay away from it. Definitely not worth your money. You got a hot spot right there. The detent system sucks. This little cool feature is really more of a hassle and a pain than anything. The texturing on the material is awful. Well, it's, I mean, it's a little better than the Ontario. Oh, no, it's about on par with the Ontario, which I'm not a fan of it either on the Ontario, but it's neither here nor there. At least the Ontario is a much better knife. So, um, that's about it, guys. Video is kind of long already, so I'll let y'all go. Till then, stay smart, stay sharp. Uh, this is the new knife in the EDC rotation coming up for review. Uh, this is the Buck, uh, I believe it's like a Vantage Select or something like that. Uh, it's a 340B, I want to say. Or just search up Buck 340 and you'll find it because I know I've done that. But this is a much smaller knife um, than really any of the knives I've usually carried. As you can see, it's even, well, it's about the same size as the Journeyer. Close. Uh, Ontario Rat. It's bigger. Pretty good bit bigger. But, anyways, that's a great little knife. I'm happy with this one. And this one was less money. So, you guys have a good day. Stay smart, stay sharp, and stay the hell away from the CRKT journeyer. You guys have a good day.